What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and welcome to a probably long overdue headset and headphone review. I'm going to do a couple of these as we enter into the Christmas season. Think of these reviews as, hey, I see this on somebody's wish list. Should I buy it or should I not? Or, hey, I want to put it on mine. Should I do so or should I put something else on that wish list? It's not necessarily, is this the best headset within its area? Because people have differing needs, different environments. That actually becomes a little bit more difficult, especially when you find that some people just don't care so much or some people want a headphone that... Uh, you know, hide some of the issues in music and other people want ones that really identify the mistakes in music. And that's more of an audiophile thing. But you may not know that you want one or two, one, one or the other, uh, depending on what type of listener you are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to review the HyperX Cloud X uh, Xbox certified headphones from Kingston. So basically what happens is you guys know I don't do sponsored reviews. So they, co they contacted me and said, can we send you a copy? I said, sure. They sent me a copy. I haven't opened it. That'll be given away to patrons at the end of the month. As you guys know, this is the way I do things with video game codes as well. If I get something, I buy it. So basically, I have the box, which you guys will get at the end of the month on Patreon, some lucky winner. And I went out and bought my own version. So that way, I could re review it. and You guys wouldn't have to worry about me not spending my own cash and giving you an honest review. So the last thing I want to talk about is my testing, which I think is a little bit different than others. We've always had that situation where somebody says, here's the headset review. I got these a week ago and here's my answer. Here, here's if they're worth buying. Well, let's be honest, that's bullshit. You know, how many times have we been on the 31st day of something, we've broken it and we've checked and the warranty was for 30 days. So I do 100 hours of durability testing that is post the actual sound testing and microphone testing. And then also I do some testing again afterwards to see if that sound has changed, if something's broken loose. So let's just sort of dive in. HyperX Cloud X. Let's talk about the design, durability, and then comfort. The design, you know, it's muted. I, I actually really like it. For something from Kingston that handles RAM and stuff like that, I really expected something to be more, you know, out there. And hey, look at me. I don't need, hey, look at me headphones. In fact, I don't want them. These are actually very, very well designed in a muted way. They've just got some stitching there, which is okay. They, uh, you know, have typical side cups. There's, there's nothing really crazy out here. I do like the horseshoe designs, very sturdy. I'll talk about that in durability. But overall, this is a headset that's just sort of elegantly muted. Uh, even the braided cable is a muted, almost retail carpet look <laughs> to that cable. And of course, it gets all of its power from a typical stereo cable. There is no USB. But nicely enough, it does actually come with a splitter. So you can plug it into your PC. It splits the microphone and the stereo. So overall, a headset that is very muted, which I like. This is not competitive gaming for me. Now, there are some issues I don't like in the design. Why don't we look right there at the bottom? You see that little underneath the speaker hole, right? Or underneath the wiring hole right there? Yeah, that used to hold a detachable mic. Detachable mics are my bane. Uh, you don't see me showing it right here because I lost it. And I've talked to five other owners of this. None of them still have their actual detachable mics. Additionally, there is a cover for this, which is also detachable, and that's missing. Now, luckily I was able to test the microphone prior, but I was really unhappy with the overall design. I'm not a, a big fan of detachable anything unless it, it attaches somewhere on the headset as well for storage. This stuff does not. It is supposed to go in your box or in a, a case that it comes with. I feel that that's just very overall poor design. And ultimately, from the people I've talked to who have this, it has it, it's not necessarily become an issue, but it is certainly a problem that multiple people have pushed forward as one particular issue with this headset. That detachable microphone just goes away. It just disappears. Additionally, it comes out the bottom, and it doesn't come out the side like, let's say, a mod mic or some other mics. Now, Normally, if it's connected at all times, that would be okay. But because it's detachable, there's a very small chance just due to geometry that this is going to catch a little bit easier on a wire or on your chest if you're playing a game or if you're moving around on a lapel, whatever it may be. And that detachable mic did catch a couple times and did make some odd sounds here or there and did seem to loosen it a little bit. So design-wise, I really like it. It's muted. I love that. Detachable mic, my suggestion to you, never untouch it. You know, just attach it and move on. Uh, that would probably be your best bet. I didn't, I don't remember detaching it, but it certainly isn't connected anymore, so that's lost. Really a, a big ding against it in my book. But to other people, they may really be okay with that. So design-wise, muted, I like it. Overall, I wouldn't consider it elegant. I would consider it just uh, just really not out there, which is, is great. Durability, okay, so... <laughs> As you guys know, man, four dogs, hardwood floors. Uh, I, I use these with everything whenever I'm testing. Everything from iPhones, Androids when I'm working out to uh, to 
you know, running to whatever I can to test to see how they work durability wise. And I sort of do put them through their paces, guys. Uh, multiple people trying them on, uh, you know, just left on the couch. Dogs get on the couch, then they leap off and the, you know, the headphones go flying. This is really my testing of a normal home environment that, that things do go wrong. Things do happen. People do pull them off your head on accident. They do get caught on stuff. That's life, right? As, as long as you're not one of the, those people that's just sitting in place, not moving at all when they're playing video games and nothing around you happens, then there's no chaos, whatever. But my durability testing includes all that. Do you know what? The only thing these, the, the only problem these guys show is there's a little scuff right there. That's it. Little scuff on the edge. I have absolutely destroyed these they've been stepped on by people's high heels a dog got a hold of them <laughs> they've been they've just been absolutely used and abused and they are fantastically durable matter of fact they punch above their weight and we're going to talk as we go forward about a couple things where i really do feel that these do punch above their weight in some various different ways so when it comes to durability, I am incredibly happy with this. Everything is very tight. I'm not happy with the mic, and I think that is a small part of durability where, you know, does it come loose over multiple unplugins and plugging in? That did seem a little bit shady, but overall as a headset, freakishly durable, almost hilariously so. Very happy with it, and to me at least, it withstood damage without showing visible marks, which I was actually surprised especially because, you know, when something hits hardwood or something scuffs against something, you know, far more abrasive than it, you would expect it to show more marks and it doesn't. So kudos to that. Let's talk about comfort. Talk about punching above its weight. Now, this is something when you talk to people online or when you go and check reviews, you're going to see this mimicked many times in other people's reviews that these are freakishly comfortable. I'm going to be honest. As an audiophile, I've got $600 headphones, $400 headphones, two $300 headphones, and then a couple earbuds and things that are a little bit lower depending on what I'm doing or just gifts somebody gave me or, you know, they came with some free item. These punch so far above their weight, it's hilarious. These are quite simply some of the most comfortable headphones I've ever used, let alone expensive or not expensive. There's a couple reasons why, and I want to describe those because, you know, it's funny that something so universally, uh, you know, lauded, a lot of people don't explain why they might be comfortable. You just hear them being comfortable. There's a couple reasons. One, I think the earpieces are excellently uh, cushioned and they are just big enough to fit over most sized ears. So you don't have a lot of ear rest on these. Now, ear rest, of course, is when the cup doesn't go fully over the ear. These almost always do. And I've got some friends with pretty big ears and they work for the most part. Additionally, there's no slice on the top or on the bottom for allowing heat dissipation, which really worried me because heat around your ear, remember these are electronic, they have 53 millimeter drivers. So you've got some electricity going in there. You've got the speakers working and you are at some point ex accepting the fact that heat is going to build up. I was actually really surprised. I was really surprised. Whether that's because I took these off and put them on at various times and I don't really remember that being the way I was dissipating heat or not, I didn't find myself ear shifting, which is where you wear them and you're, you're rubbing them on your ears because they start to get warm or you're doing this and you're uncupping them. They were just overall very comfortable. Additionally, the, as I stated before, their bend here, when they get to a certain point, instead of returning and ratcheting down and becoming ultra tight, they actually don't. They spread to accept almost any ear or, or any head size. That's a big effing head, guys. That's a big effing head. And of course, you still have your adjustments there. That is a massive head that you'll be able to put these on. And they worked. They were just ultra comfortable. So comfortable. This is the first headset. And again, you're talking to somebody who has $600 uh, earpieces. These, this is the first headset ever where I was listening to Neil deGrasse Tyson on them because I wanted to hear some vocals on a very shitty source, uh, which was a online radio station of all things. And I fell asleep and I woke up six hours later and my ears did not hurt. That, my friends, is probably the best uh, overall kudo I could give this headset for comfort. The mic and where it uh, rests because it is adjustable was fine. That that all worked very well. The mic, I'm just going to be brutally honest, we'll cover it a little bit later in sound probably. The mic isn't the best. I wouldn't do voiceover work with it, but if you want to transmit your voice to somebody, that's what it does. And it does work well for that. But comfort wise, these punch so far above their weight, it's impossible to describe easily. And this is something that you see repeated time and time and time and time and time again from different users on various reviews for these. And I'll be honest, when I first got them, I thought there's no way they can be that comfortable. But as somebody who has very expensive, nice headsets that aren't this comfortable, I have to say, wow, that, that really does help you interact with the music on a higher level when you're not always adjusting them after a couple hours. So very, very cool there and really useful. 
Let's talk about power and then we'll talk about sound. These are 60 ohm headsets. What does that mean? Well, if you consider 30 ohm and lower low power headsets that don't require a lot of power to get their sound out of them, 60 is in the middle ground. Once you get to about 100 to 120 ohm, you start going into the high power territory. Now, We've seen as we move forward that some of those uh, regulations have sort of dropped and you see some really good headphones at much lower ohm, 32, 23 in fact for some sends, which is what I have is, uh, is multiple sends. That, that kind of headphone, that kind of headset is normal. The, the middle ground here between 32 and let's say 100 is where some of these headsets come in and there's some varying different degrees in which they can perform depending on their power source. Really, you need to think of it this way. If it's 32 or lower and you plug it into a controller, you're good to go. You plug it into your iPhone, you're good to go. You plug it into your Android device, you're good to go. Once you plug it into something more powerful, for example, let's say you have an amplifier, a 32, 23 ohm headset has a higher chance of basically popping, exploding, uh, not in the true form. This isn't a Michael Bay explosion with sparks, but it will basically pop and it will just be getting too much power for what it has. 60 is an odd number. I'm going to be honest. When I saw 60 ohm, I was actually a little confused by that because it's closer overall to the low power. Uh, it's almost double to get to a high power, but it is still high enough that it could cause issues on low power devices, which we'll discuss in a second. So 60 ohm headset, uh, a, a unique number, but we're going to discuss that now. What do I listen to these on and how do they sound? Well, I listen to these on all different things. Yes, it's an Xbox certifi certified headset, which means they plugged it into the Xbox controller with no plug in at all, just off the battery, which is, is basically you would consider the headphones lowest power state. That's the lowest power it's probably going to get. And they work and they work very well. But I also plug these into iPhones, into Androids, into my powered amps, which I'll discuss in a moment, some vacuum preamps and a couple other things. And they actually work really well at 60. There was one single device, it was an Android device that gave me a warning and said, the headset that you have plugged in is draining too much power. Now I was a little bit nervous about that, but I decided, you know what, I'll continue to play and see what happens. It never stopped working or it never showed no headset, which happens if they're a little bit higher. If they were maybe in the 80 ohm to 100 ohm, you might start getting situations where your phone, your Android device, uh, your tablet would not sense them at all. These worked every time, which was really nice. and. Let's just talk about them through the power spectrum. Lowest power devices, which would be basically your Xbox One controller. It sounded really good, but one thing to remember, the Xbox controller uses a wireless codec for its audio, and I have an issue with that. I've always been slightly bothered with the way that sounds itself. Nothing to do with this controller. How does this controller work though, wirelessly on the Xbox One controller? It works very well. I was really happy with the sound. There's a tiny bit of flub in some bass in some games. My testing involves a ton of games that are like dice games with excellent sound. And then now I have a really good game, but with bad sound in, of course, the form of Skyrim Remastered. We all know that there's issues there with the compression on sound, so I've made sure that doesn't update because I, I know that they're planning on fixing it. So I have that there and I can always test what bad sound will sound like. And, and also I have the old version so I can go and listen to what a non-compressed sound would sound like. Now, as I've stated before, a lot of people who have headphones want it one way or the other. They want a headphone that covers up bad sound or they want a headphone that uh, really elevates bad sound. It's, it's neutral, it doesn't hide anything. These are a little bit skewed towards the side of hiding. They're a little bit warm and they've got a tiny bit of over bass, just a little bit. And that could be the form of their design, which I'm going to discuss in one second. But I was overall very happy with how these sound. Like I said, there was a couple times within the controller when it was plugged wirelessly, there was a little flub in the bass where the bass wasn't as tight as I would have liked, where there was a tiny bit of a flub I could notice where it just didn't seem like it was getting the extension on the driver it needed to perform the bass it required. However, I have played all of these dice games with excellent $600 headsets, home theater systems, and so forth. This is still a very good recreation of what the developer wanted you to hear. Now, one part of sound is sound isolation, which I want to discuss before I move on to the, the mobile devices and the, the power when I plugged them into even more powerful uh, uh, amps and stuff like that. The sound isolation on these is second to none. Now, that means because they're closed back headphones, your sound stage is a little narrower. They're not open back. That means people outside won't be able to hear you as won't be able to hear the sound as well. But also your sound stage in games will be a little bit narrower. These are some of the best sound isolating headphones without having any kind of electrical system to do so that I have ever heard. In fact, it was the first time ever where I wished that I had a decibel meter that would fit inside the ear cup so I could test 
what that sound, what that decibel drop off was when I put them on, because man, does that work. Now, what that also does is allows you to experience the sound a little bit more naturally, even if it is closed off with the sound stage, because you don't require as much sound to beat out any ambient sound getting into your headphones. Now, there's a lot of different arguments about some people wanting them to be open backed and there's open back headphones out there, but these are not. These are closed back. They have a good bass response because of that. They have a good overall feel to them, fairly warm, but the mids and the highs were easily noticeable at any one time. So I was very happy with these. Then I plugged them into the HDMI, basically getting HDMI into a receiver and I plugged the headset into the receiver and also did optical into a very low powered DAC and then into this to see how it handled uh, the sound when it was actually not running through that wireless codec on the Xbox One wireless controller. That really fixed up the issue. In fact, the flub went away even on the DAC, which didn't have a lot of power, which makes me wonder if the wireless codec that, that they're using was causing that, or at the very least, there was a little bit of an issue there. So fantastic. Then I plug these into Android devices, iPhones, everything, and just listen to them. Did they get stunningly loud? No. And that's a situation that we're going to talk about here now. No matter what I plug these into, I, except for the powered amp, no matter what I plug these into prior to the powered amp, I was always wanting to turn them up a little bit. And that right there is the 60 ohm power requirement sort of showing its ugly head or it's good head, depending on if you want to blast your ears out. When I was playing on the Xbox One controller and it was wireless, it was loud enough. I could hear everything. The sound isolation was perfect, which means I didn't need to overdrive these headsets so that I could, uh, you know, get rid of dogs barking in the background or people driving by or construction. It worked great, but I was consistently pressing on that to turn it up just a bit. I wanted it just a tiny bit louder. The bass was great, but I just a little bit more of a full in sound. I just wanted a little bit more volume wirelessly. Now, once I started plugging into the receiver, uh, plugging it into slightly powered DACs of any kind, it worked great. But on the Android devices, on the iPhones, you plug this in, let's say uh, you just want them in because you like a good sound, even though you're using those lower powered devices, it's gonna sound great but it won't have that volume you're probably hoping for. 60 ohm, that is something that I think you could probably expect. Now I plugged these into a powered preamp and I was really blown away by how they sort of elevated that sound. This is a system where at this cost, uh, I think like I said on Amazon for 80 bucks, and then if you bought a DAC or you bought an amp that had just a couple more watts going into these, you might get yourself a great overall sound. But I was still happy with them regardless. It's just that once you put some more power through these, wow, you could tell that they were there and ready to accept it and really did sort of elevate past what I thought they were going to. So sound wise, I would say these are very good. Overall, regardless of what you plug them into, for a headset, for this cost and basically if it was just on your Amazon wish list kind of thing. When it comes down to the headset as a whole and how I review these, really, you know, buy or not buy, you could do it that way. And I would say that these sort of come across as a buy. They come across as something that you wouldn't need to rush out and return. You know, I'm somebody who has a DAC and has a, a preamp and all that stuff, even though I'm running off the Xbox One and the PS4 and, and soon to be the Switch. But you as a consumer, if you get these and you plug them into your controller and you're just running them that way, you should be stunningly happy with how these sound. You should not feel like you need to rush out and get something. You know, we all have different requirements. And I think that this has a few positives and a few negatives, which I'm going to cover now. But overall, I think that these are a headset you probably wouldn't need to remove from your list right now. How does it come across as positives? Well, positives, form, function, excellent, comfort, amazing, really comfortable, sound isolation. I wouldn't say second to none because there's no actual electronic sound isolation going on here. There's no uh, negating of sound waves coming in. It's just purely a mechanical function that's going on in, these, in this headset, but it's a phenomenal one at that. You know, when you add comfort and you add good sound isolation together, what that does is it allows you to not have to overdrive a headset because you can still just hear it. You're not fighting outside anything. You're not fighting the discomfort of a headset to where that sort of interferes. I think we've all seen that. You go to a movie theater, maybe you don't feel so well. You're watching the movie, but it's a little bit hard, right? Because you're a little bit uncomfortable. These headsets 
sort of punch above their weight because they have their bonuses in places that maybe we wouldn't have expected. Sound isolation, I would never have expected to be this good. And so when you have that, you can sort of move forward in other areas and maybe, uh, you know, do your 60 ohm and, and allow it to not be super loud on the controller. But hey, if somebody wants to then plug it into the receiver, they know that they don't have to worry about these things exploding. So positives wise, sounds great for this headset. For this headset, it's not perfect. Uh, everything about it, I really like when it comes to the sound and it comes to how it handles its power. But the negatives. I am in no way, shape or form a fan of detachable mics and the detachable mic here was a trouble spot day one. I do not like it. I think it needs to go as quick as it possibly could. I think additionally, I would have liked the controls to be a little bit different there. They're sort of a poppy control and they short, sort of have a, a short throw volume, which means you don't have to turn them up very much before they're going, you know, one way or the other. Would have liked a little bit of more of a longer throw on that where there was a little bit more uh, finite steps that you took for volume. Additionally, 60 ohm. This is a positive and a negative. I just said it was a positive, so you gotta bear with me. It is slightly a negative as well, because a person who enters this sphere of price, who maybe gets these, may not know about those other things and may not want to. I mean, guys, I get it. You know, I, as an audiophile, I'm one of the few people who's gonna tell you right away, I get it. I do, I get it. I get that you don't want anything else plugged in. I get that you just wanna plug it into your controller. That's why I'm discussing this as both a positive and a negative. When you plug these in, you're going to be very loud on your controller. Very loud. That is the number I will give you, which isn't a number. It's a rating. Very loud. But you won't go super loud. And if you want that, you have to go with a different headset and preferably one that doesn't have this ohm rating or at the very least has a better signal to noise ratio that's going on here because that, that certainly is a situation where it was loud enough, even in a loud environment, to hear it perfectly. But like I said, I was just always constantly pushing this just a little bit more. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys like these reviews. I know they're a little bit more talky. I certainly won't uh, explain all of this in the other reviews I do, but I figured this is the first one. Again, HyperX Cloud X, an overall excellent, cheaper pair of headphones with surprisingly uh, unique bonuses that I never expected. Certainly when it comes to a little bit more power handling that it, that it can do. And very much in the comfort and the sound isolation. Absolutely not expecting those to be like this. And as somebody who is wearing $600 headphones sometimes, and you know, headphones that are rated and have multiple times won, you know, best headset, you know, out at the current time, to put these on and be like, oh wow, these are sort of like putting a cloud on my, on my head. Uh, that was a little bit eye opening to me. So anyway, that's it for me. I hope you guys liked the review. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Maybe check out Patreon. And this Christmas, if you get a chance, I have the affiliate links in all of the videos. Feel free to use those because if you can't help the channel with donations or whatever, but you're doing some Christmas shopping, using the Amazon affiliates actually does help the channel. If you don't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.